KBYP with video 11 in the transmission line in the antenna series after particularly video 10, then make sure you watch the whole thing or you may not understand the electromagnetics behind it and that's what's really important. But in video 10, I showed you this, how an antenna appears and even to engineers doing antenna research as a series LCR circuit and I explain why it isn't. That appearance is because of energy into the feed point that is then embodied in traveling fields. The resistance appears to be the radiation function. This, this is, comes from or is related to the definition of a transmission line. If the antenna is transmission lines, we should be able to use transmission line theory to understand it. The definition of transmission line characteristic and transmission lines do not have impedance. Impedance is a series circuit element that restricts flow of current. Antennas or transmission lines don't do that. But the definition of that characteristic is one of two things. Either a terminating resistance value that results in no reflection when the resistance value matches the characteristic of the transmission line and not characteristic impedance. There is no such thing. It does not exist. It is the characteristic, not impedance, not resistance. If it were resistance, it would eat the power up. If it was impedance, the power wouldn't make it to the other end. And further, if it were impedance or resistance, that only occurs in circuits, so the energy would have to go down the center conductor of the coax and back to the shield, and that doesn't happen. And if it did, there wouldn't be any propagation delay because the current flow would be instantaneous in a series circuit. So in this analogy, which is correct, I have seen this and used this, it's also the same principle, exactly the same principle, and brings the same responses on an analyzer as a quartz crystal. Exactly this. For series resonance and for parallel resonance, it's, it's a parallel circuit. But if this is what it is, <clears throat> and modern physics shows that the radiation function is not this, then that implies that whatever the radiation function is cannot be measured at the feed point. And that's a disaster. Because we'd have no way of measuring to optimize it. Well, I can assure you it can be measured because it does appear as that resistive value. So what that implies is that not that there are necessarily separate things happening, but they happen at different times. And we know for a fact it takes time for the energy to go out a dipole arm and return. But what's happening with this analogy is building fields here. At the initial time that the energy comes in the feed point, those fields begin to exist and travel. But the thing that is radiate is, is antenna emission happens after that process of reflection and happens at the feed point. So this circuit does not exist in a sense all at once. This happens later, but it happens so fast we can't see the difference. It's happening at almost a speed of light. That leads to observations why NFEDs and loops are not antennas, why OCDs, I, I call them OCDs, it's, it's really off-center fed, but I, I use the term obsessive compulsive disorder because that's what's behind using them, because they're garbage. They are antennas, but they're horribly screwed up. And the Yagi hoax, great high-gain antenna, oh no, no, no. But I'm going to explain why these are all miserable, either not antennas or miserable antennas. And feds are from the early days of broadcast, very low frequency, for receive. Back then, they used vertical towers for transmit, especially for the, in the spark gap days. But an NFED is an open circuit, one terminal. There's a terminal. A loop, which is an inductor, has two terminals. In this analogy... <clears throat> this cannot exist as a circuit. It's open. There will be no current flow, no energy transferred, unless that is a complete circuit. That's the first rule of circuits. The current flows through a closed path from a source through the circuit and back. And that is two terminals, one there and one there. And it is physically impossible to have any less than two terminals. If so, it's an open. That's what an NFED is. 
It's intended for low frequency receive where the transmitting station is putting a tremendous amount of power in ground waves and literally inside the ground, under the ground. I've actually seen it coupled through concrete in the ground. That long unterminated wire is a long capacitor above ground picking up these traveling waves along the ground. We know from the crystal radio days that without a ground, the crystal detector doesn't work unless the station is extremely close. And that second connection to ground here is a second terminal for that capacitor. Not an antenna for HF transmit. This is only effective for very low frequencies that are ground coupled. Our short wave signals are coming down from above. Once they get that close to the ground, they're lost. It's impossible to load an open circuit. So NFEDs are high impedance to open circuits, and it's an utter waste of time to do it. I've worked many of them just embarrass their operators with a tiny fraction of the power. The loop, magnetic loop, is not an antenna. It has two terminals. Notice they're universally tuned with a capacitor here. But that makes a circuit, and in circuit theory, which it does follow, that's a resonant tack, and it conserves the energy, and that's why there tends to be very high voltages and arcing, because it's not an antenna, it's not emitting the power. <laughs> the fact that it's high Q proves it's not an antenna. It does not show that it's a good antenna. In high Q circuits, the energy is kept in the oscillating tank between the electric field and the magnetic field back and forth. That isn't radiation. In one of my earlier videos, I explained experiments with the venerable Saturn II halo, the 6 meter antenna, on my workbench. It, it laid on my workbench like, like this, but much larger diameter. But literally laying on a bench, I could get it to match 75 to 50 ohms just perfectly. I took it outside on that pole, six feet up, the match went to crap. Would not match, would not load, low impedance, horrible, reactive, not an antenna. It's a magnetic loop. It was coupling to the bench, coupling to the wall, coupling to the wire to the light, coupling to the window, whatever. That made some kind of coupling besides just a loop which is just an inductor and there's no no capacitor in that loop there's a little stray capacitance but no capacitor when i took it outside and laid it on the deck horizontally on a table with the loop extending past the deck and looking down to the ground it started to get a little coupling and if i tip it down closer to the ground the the coupling would improve and the feed point conditions would improve towards a proper match. But when I pick it up, that went away. That's not an antenna. The obsessive compulsive disorder antenna is an antenna. But by these transmission line principles I've showed you in the last two videos, when this field is at the end to reflect, this one's only part way down. And when this one has returned to the feed point, this one has gone to the end. And to borrow an automotive analogy, the engine's badly out of time. This collision will not occur that I mentioned in the last two videos. And that collision is the radiation or the emission function. Now that's just for a narrow pulse. If it's a sine wave train, then that's different. But see, one of the old books states that what SWR is are these fields that are not emitted that come back to the feed point and go down the transmission line. So here we got a recipe for a horrible mismatch. I can't tell you how many OCDs I've absolutely embarrassed on the air. They universally need amplifiers, and I work them with a fraction of the power. They can't figure it out. Their antenna is garbage. It's a myth that they're going to have an out-of-balance feed point and get multi-band operation, and they sure will. They'll get a piece of crap on all bands. Yagi. Ham spent ten thousand dollars on this hoax. Five thousand for a tower, several thousand for an antenna, 
thousand for feed line, yada yada yada. A Yagi is a loaded dipole. Short load antennas don't work well. I have a Hustler Ball Mount Mobile on my pickup truck. It works fantastic. From West Iowa, I work DX QRP. But even working that well, it takes 10 times the power than it does for my antennas here, the big antennas. That's the difference of a short, heavily loaded antenna. It works, but it makes a bunch of skewed fields because of that loading inductor. The Yagi myth and the fraud is, is just showing a graph that shows some crap like this. Looks like a tooth. Oh, that's a great antenna because the power is being radiated that way. No, it isn't. These con artists that sell these antennas never show you the three-dimensional pattern. Because since this is a dipole, and this is a so-called reflector, there's no reflection going on here. It's coupling. And these are the directors, and the emission and transmit is generally that direction. That's only in the horizontal plane. That's horizontal pattern. The vertical pattern is just a dipole. And I can't tell you how many very surprised Yagi owners I've worked off the side with my vertical. We shouldn't be able to hear you. Well, you can. <laughs> because your Yagi is not what you think it is. It's another compromised antenna, and worse, it's put up at generally 50 to 100 feet through lots of transmission line losses both ways that covers up high SWR at the feed point. Because when there's reflective power, it's greatly attenuated coming down the line, so measuring the SWR at the ham shack is deceptive. The match at the feed point would be much worse than at the, at the feed point. But also, we can't get up there to measure it without risking life and limb, and we can't go around a cherry picker because it'll interfere with the patterns. I have routinely, over six years, and 3,000 some contacts embarrassed most of the Yagi owners who are usually running amplifiers as are the OCD, obsessive compulsive disorder antennas, because they can't get out, they can't talk, they can't be heard, so they throw an amplifier on. I don't need it. I work with a tenth of the power as a rule. They can't explain it. Why? Their antennas suck. And, it, it, and it's just that simple. That is what it is. 3,000 contacts. I, I gave up trying to log the Yagis I've stomped on with the amplifiers. It, and, and then I've kind of given up working QRP DX because it's too much power. And I'm doing with a seat chimp, with a simple cheap dipole. At the most with transmission line, maybe 100 bucks. So... For more on this, look up the topic of antenna psychology. That's what's at play here. KBYP.